Thousands of protesters also marched Saturday in Washington, D.C., outside the U.S. Supreme Court, where the conservative majority could impose more abortion restrictions in the coming months. On December 1st, the court will hear a case concerning Mississippi abortion law that could overturn Roe v. Wade, the landmark 1973 Supreme Court decision that legalized abortion. Ahead of the nationwide action, several Democratic House members shared their personal experiences getting abortions themselves. At a hearing Thursday on the Texas abortion ban by the Committee on Oversight and Reform, they gave deeply moving testimonies. This is Missouri Congressmember Cory Bush sharing how she had an abortion after being raped at 17. In the summer of 1994, I was a young girl, all of 17 years old, and had just graduated high school. Like so many black girls during that time, I was obsessed with fashion and gold jewelry and how I physically showed up in the world. But I was also very lost. For all of my life, I had been a straight A student with dreams of attending college and becoming a nurse. But high school early on was difficult for me. I was discriminated against, bullied, and as time passed, my grades slipped and lo along with it, the dream of attaining a full scholarship to a historically black college. That summer, I was just happy that I passed my classes and that I finished high school. Shortly after graduating, I went on, to a, on a church trip to Jackson, Mississippi. I had many friends on that trip, and while there, I met a boy, a friend of a friend. He was a little older than I was, about maybe 20 years old. That first day we met, we flirted, we talked on the phone. While on the phone, he asked me, could he come over to my room? I was bunking with a friend and hanging out and said he could stop by. But he didn't show up for a few hours, and by the time he did, it was so late that my friend and I had gone to bed. I answered the door and quietly told him he could come in, imagining that we would talk and laugh like we had done over the phone. But the next thing I knew, he was on top of me, messing with my clothes and not saying anything at all. What is happening? I thought, I didn't know what to do. I, I was frozen in shock, just laying there as his weight pressed down upon me. When he was done, he got up, he pulled up his pants, and without a word, he left. That was it. I was confused, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed. I asked myself, was it something that I had done? The next morning, I wanted to talk to him. I, I just wanted to say something to him, but he refused to talk to me. By the time that trip ended, we still hadn't spoken at all. About a month after the trip, I turned 18. A few weeks later, I realized I had missed my period. I reached out to a friend and asked the guy from the church trip to contact, contact me. I waited for him to reach out, but he never did. I never heard from him. I, I was 18, I was broken, I felt so alone. I blamed myself for what had happened to me. But I knew I had options. I had known other girls who had gone to a local clinic to get birth control and some who had gotten abortions. So I looked through the yellow pages and scheduled an appointment. During my first visit, I found out that I was nine weeks, nine weeks pregnant and then there the panic set in. How could I make this pregnancy work? How could I, at 18 years old and barely scraping by, support a child on my own? And, and, and I would have been on my own. I was stressed out knowing that the father wouldn't be involved and that I, I feared my parents would kick me out of the home. The best parents in the world, but I feared, feared they would kick me out. My dad was a proud father and always bragging about his little girl and how he knew I would go straight to college and become attorney general. That was his, his goal for me. So with no scholarship intact and college out of the foreseeable future, I couldn't bear the thought of disappointing my dad again. I knew it was a decision I had to make for myself, so I did. My abortion happened on a Saturday. There were a few other people in the clinic room, waiting room, including one other young black girl. I overheard the clinic staff talking about her, saying she had ruined her life, and that's what they do. They being black girls like us, 
Before the procedure, I remember going in for counseling and being told that if I moved forward with this pregnancy, my baby would be jacked up because the fetus was already malnourished and underweight. Being told that if I had this baby, I would wind up on food stamps and welfare. I was being talked to like trash and it worsened my shame. Afterwards, while in the changing area, I heard some girls, all white, talking about how they were told how bright their futures were, how loved their babies would be if they adopted, and that their options and their opportunities were limitless. In that moment, listening to those girls, I felt anguish. I felt like I had failed. I went home, my body ached, and I had this heavy bleeding. I felt so sick. I felt dizzy, nauseous. I felt like something was missing. I felt alone, but I also felt so resolved in my decision. Choosing to have an abortion was the hardest decision I had ever made. I, but at 18 years old, I knew it was the right decision for me. It was freeing, knowing I had options. Even still, it took long for me to feel like me again until most recently when I decided. All right, first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, Hashem Kakadash, Double and Assault Apostles, and Alessa Great Mill and Sighty Shutin, Men and Brethren, in this work as a surgeon and truth. Yahweh is in the name of the Heavenly Father, which means He to be here exists. But Hashem in the name, Yahweh Shai. Who the will again records, Lord and Jesus Christ, His name is Yahweh Shai. He, he Savior, He deliverer. Israel is going to need a Savior and a deliverer in these last days from the onslaught of the devil, which is Esau and Edom. Right, and these nations that are confederate with him in making the nation of Israel, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans not be a people and not serve your power. All right, so Salakia for the um, the lengthy Salakia for the lengthy um, introduction, but basically is um this lesson is gonna be on these women who demand we demand better reps, Cory Bush. Pamela Japal or J. Apal and Barbara Lee share their own abortion story. So they were in, they in, they in authority somewhat or in rulership positions, right? Representing the people and they what they are um, they give their own stories of being raped. And that being the justification of them being given given the right or having the right to have abortions, right? They would like they they, they 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 had abortions and they would continue to fight for the rights of abortionists and women who would like to have control of their future. Now, first these first things first. The reason why all this is happening is because of the curses of 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 that are upon Israel, because some of these women here, this one in particular, she's a Jake, right? And she actually just gave her testimony of the nurses. Who would Jake by her parents saying that she she damned her future which in retrospect the Edomite girls right they had more options or they they, they they had a brighter future but her future was doom and gloom by what she was doing right so uh, it all goes to what uh, that spiritual depression that curse that is put upon us from our Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashim Yahushai because we broke his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? The Lord said what? His ways are equal and man's ways are unequal. So, you do wrong, you're going to receive for the wrong that you had done. Alright? This is Isaiah chapter what? 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So what is happening is that the, the, the lawmakers are now trying to recalibrate the laws in certain states. So that these women won't be able to um, commit abortions. But one of the key things was said that um, I didn't play because, you know, it's a, a very long video. The video is what, like 19, 18 minutes and nearly 19 minutes long right but there was a a next old lady she she had a testimony right and she was speaking about uh she said that um when the governor said um don't worry they're going to deal with, with rape you know they're not going to have any rape anymore in the future because of the nw whatever plans they have in the nwo or for the nwo right you won't be able to to rape because you remember the way this thing is, is going is that this man is when I say this man I'm speaking about Edomite man the scripture says he sits in the seat as though he is God 
but he's not so what he's doing he's he's using ai he's using these different technologies to get into your body right to be able to to monitor everything that you do right this is what this man is doing so probably that is where this is a presumption that is where they might be going along in 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 terms of what she said which was that you're not going to be able to commit rape in in the future right but for now these women are fighting for the right to commit abortions which is what which is a sin right so it says what one to them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter so when the shift just say hand do hand join in hand the wicked shall not all together go unpunished this way speaking because yeah because these women right or that woman in particular she's a jake right she's a jake and what she is doing she, her, her, her spirit is in the spirit of what the romans right and what she's what what, what she's saying she's saying that she wants to be able to commit she's fighting to be able to commit an abortion and this is what abortion is this is Exodus 20 and 13. Thou shalt not kill. Abortion is to kill. To what? To murder, to slay, to kill, to murder, to slay, to premeditate, to premeditate, to ac accidentally or as an avenger, to slay, to murder, to assassinate, right? To be killed, right? Proper, properly to dash in pieces that is kill a human being, especially to murder, to put to death, to kill. And that's what they do, right? That's what they do. They kill. They kill a fetus. They kill a baby. Right? Because from the time that a man ejaculates into a woman and that um that um that child that child right that embryo is formed. Matter of fact, even the ejaculation, that is life. That is life. Right? That is life. Um so like, yeah, let me just see if I get something. I want to get um I can't use this scripture here. I want to see something. Right, and Genesis 4 and 1 and Adam knew Eve and she conceived. Let me see something here. Ha, ha, conceived, age 20, 29, ha, ra, to conceive, to become pregnant, to bear, to bear, be with child, to be conceived, to conceive, become pregnant, pregnant, sorry, to conceive, to contrive, to contrive, device, to conceive, to be with child, right, it's not to be with a, a embryo it says what to be with child and a child is life right it has a life right it says and adam knew genesis 4 and 1 adam knew eve right his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord All right so conceive when you conceive it's 2029 20, you're with child and what they're doing is actually killing the child. Right? So let me go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. Because this is what they this is what they this is what they're advocating for. This is what they're advocating for. We demand better reps. Cory Bush, Pamela Japal, Barbara Lee share their own abortion stories. Thousands march on Saturday in in more than 600 demonstrations across the United States to protest the increasing state of restriction on abortions. The bans of off our bodies rallies were sparked in part by near total ban on abortion that went into effect in Texas on September 1st, which bans the procedure after about six weeks and lets anyone sue the doctor and others who help a person obtain an abortion. Ahead of Saturday's nationwide, uh, well, I'm not fucked. Is it? I can, I can stop there because, I mean, the, the whole thing is that they're justifying it by saying that they were raped. 
that, that is no justification right you know everything with the Lord is equitable you know you're a wicked person to begin with and where this is happening in, in America aka Babylon the Great right because you, you you all have it you all have it in your own minds that what you're doing is right and there's an option there's no other option the only option was to what serve your heart bashing your shining spirit and in truth and look for his mercy isaiah 5 and 21 woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their in their own sight woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink because this is what this is what this is what it was offered before strong drink right you, you know feminism equality so-called equality to a man and then what you no know, the ability to, to choose i have i i i have um choice i have um oh how they say it boy they, they have they, they have choice over their bodies right they're not animals i forget the word that they use right nevertheless there's the doctrine and the wine of babylon which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. What is our righteousness? Thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not kill. Right? The law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai to abide in them. That's the righteousness of the saints. Right? Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumed the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust, which thus represents confusion. Right? Because they have lost, sorry, because they have cast away the law of Yahweh of hosts and despised the word of the whole of holy one of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, right? Two thirds of Israel, right? Unbelievers, those who, who are atheists, who are not following the law, statutes, and commandments, who are not look, living in hope towards Yahweh Shimei Hashem in repentance, right? The Lord's anger is kindled, kindled against you here in these times. And you're going to what? You're going to be judged with the wicked. Right? And he had stretched forth his hands against them and had smitten them. And the hills did tremble and the carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Right? Because he, ultimately the gates of repentance are not closed. Right? But they're closing fast. Right? So this lesson... I pray it was edifying and give all praises to you. How about Hashem, how shy, but Hashem, how cock, Right? Double on us, our apostles and elders, our teachers. Salutations to the men and brethren in this work. It's sincerity and the truth. Shalom.